I'll read again. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10. But when what is complete comes, then what is incomplete will be done away with. And I pray that God will cause that which is complete in our life to manifest in Jesus' name. That every incompleteness in our lives, everything that is imperfect in our lives, will be done away with in Jesus' name. That we will not remember the shame of our youth any longer in the name of Jesus. Also, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 138, verse 8, it reads, it said, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Amen. And I pray that the God of heaven will, will perfect that which concerneth each and every one of us in Jesus' name. That that which concerns you, your marriage, your career, your, your, your children, your, your honor, your fame, your healing. The God of heaven will, will perfect all that in Jesus' name. And to this teaching I, I, is tagged, doing away with imperfection. Doing away with imperfection. The first fact we just need to establish is this. Yes, there's so much imperfection in the world. Yes, no one can doubt that. But God is never the author of imperfection. God is not the author of anything that is not complete. Everything about God is always good and is always perfect. Let's open our Bibles to the book of James chapter 1 verse 17. This is, and this is one of the nature, the, one of the qualities of God, which we need to understand as believers. God does not give you to take away. It's not a God who, 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 who blesses you and adds sorrow to it. That's what the Bible, Bible says in the book of Proverbs. It said, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow to it. So that is the quality of God. God does not bless to add sorrow to it. The, the quality of God is, is always good and it's always perfect. James chapter 1 verse 17 reads, it said, Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of light with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amen. God, every good and perfect gift is from God. Amen. God is not the author of sickness. He's not the author of shame. He's not the author of barrenness. He's not the author of lack. He's not the author of suffering. He's not the author of pain. In any way, he's not in the author of all those things. But rather, he's the author of all good things. Anything that you will say, Father, I thank you for, is the author of those such things. Amen. And when God even made the earth, we can, you can be so sure God did everything good. From the first day of creation, everything has been good. Even when the world was in chaos and God stepped in. As soon as God stepped in into that situation, everything became good. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1 verse 4. It said, and God saw that it was good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 10. And God saw that it was good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 12. And God saw that it was good. That was the third day. Fourth day. And God saw that in Genesis chapter 1 verse 18. And God saw that it was good. The fifth day, Genesis 1 25, Genesis 121, and God saw it was good. And Genesis on, on um, the sixth day, Genesis 1 25, God saw it was good. And on the seventh day, and God saw that all, it was very good. The first six days was just it was good, it was good, it was good. On the seventh day, in the day of perfection, in the day of completeness, in the day of rest, the Bible said, and it was very good. Amen. I can tell you all God is doing in your life is to add goodness to goodness. So at the end of your life, you can say it is very good. Amen. And I pray that will be our testimonies in Jesus' name, that every day of our life we will say, God, I thank you for this goodness of God. Even tomorrow, that's why the Bible said the light of a righteous man is like a shining light that keeps getting brighter and brighter until the day of perfection. Yes, it is good today, but I know that my tomorrow will be better than today. And I can tell you, we can already testify that our today was better than yesterday. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. God is the order of goodness. Everything in him is in order, is in harmony. But man was, who brought, man was the one who brought imperfection to, the, to this world. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 3. If you read Genesis chapter 3, you see how imperfection came into the world. Everything was perfect before man sinned. All the animals lived in harmony. All the, and, no, and the lions was not eating the, 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 the sheep. The serpent, the viper was not um, biting um, the, the child. You know, things like that were not, was not happening. But as soon as man sinned, the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse um, 17 said, the, the curse is the ground for thy sake. Amen. God cursed everything. God himself had to curse the nature. And that's what the Bible said in the book of Romans. Um, he said, even the whole creation 
they are all groaning for the manifestation of the sons of god amen they want to be redeemed they want to be to be free from that curse amen before now there, were, there used to be no rain the bible said and the god of heaven will cause springs of water to water the head by itself the first time rain came was in the days of noah amen and if, before noah's time there was no rain but the, god made a way of making everything get watered but curse brought drought curse brought pain curse made you a man to work so hard and eat so little bible said from the from the sweat of your brow you will eat can you imagine such a curse such a burden and i pray god will help us in jesus name so man was one who brought such curses upon himself pain and rebirth and sorrow woman was not supposed to have pain during childbirth but because of what uh, mankind did Brought, uh, pain came. If you read Genesis chapter uh, three verse sixteen, it said, "I will greatly increase your birth pains." Amen. And uh, uh, that also brought about the labor, the great labor in man. Genesis chapter three verse seventeen. Through toilful, uh, painful toil, you will eat your food in all days of your life. Amen. And that's why the Bible said in the book of Job chapter fourteen verse one, it said, "The days of a man are short, but it's full of trouble." Amen. Not just man in the um, gender but mankind amen both man and woman together all have troubles amen by prayer god we are in jesus name the imperfection that which came to the life of adam was not just in one realm if you look at adam the imperfection that came to him was not just in one realm was not just in one place but it affected him in all the realm of his life amen so not just despite man sinned and you will have assumed that that sin should have not only affected one part, but rather it affected virtually the whole part of man. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Before we just go on with our teaching, we can even ask ourselves, then what are the realms of man? If you talk about the realms of man, what are the realms of man? Amen. What are the parts of man? Luke chapter 2 verse 52, the Bible said, Jesus Christ increased in wisdom, stature, in favor with God, and favor with man. So your intellectual, your physical, your spiritual, and your social. Amen. Those are the four realms of man. Uh, everything can be categorized into four. I, I took Aboriginal studies in the university, and one of the things they told us about the Aboriginal group is um, the, the, the four, um, the, the, the four uh, I think the domains which the Aboriginal people see mankind. And it's almost similar. Amen. They see mankind from that spiritual aspect, from the physical aspect, from the social aspect. Amen. And from your mind, from your well-being aspect. And that all those things are, is wholesome. You know, the, it makes the whole man. Because let me tell you, you can't tell me that you're a man and you're, you're very poor socially. You can't tell me you're socially balanced and yet mentally you are a whack. You're a whack. Amen. You need to make the whole four to make it whole. Amen. So you can see that when man fell, he did not just fall in just one part, he fell in the four realms of man. But we see Jesus Christ became perfect in all these realms. Amen. Let me tell you, if it was not for jealousy, Jesus Christ had the perfect relationship with virtually everyone. No one could point anything at Jesus Christ and say he has done wrong. Jesus Christ was perfect in all ways. The Bible said in the book of John, he said, the, 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 the prince of this world comment and he find nothing in me. Even the devil himself could not find any fault in Christ. Amen. The devil could find fault in Moses. The Bible said, and when uh, Michael went, in the book of Jude, it said, when um, my, um, Moses died and Michael went to get the body of Moses, the devil disputed over, over that body and said, no, it's mine. Because, of course, he found something in him that belongs to him and he was also contending for the body of Moses. But Michael had to rebuke him in the name of the Lord. Amen. But in Christ Jesus, he was perfect in all ways. Mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, he was balanced. Amen. And I pray that the God of heaven will restore each and every one of us to that place of perfection in Jesus' name. So the first part where man fell was intellectually, in his mind. And I will tell you, one of the problems of the world today is because of how we see the world today. Amen. Man, the imperfection in man's intellectual ability, um, um, view is what perverts the world today. Man has become void of the place of God in the world. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse 1. Psalms, chapter 14, verse 1. He said, The fool said in his heart, There is no God. 
They are corrupt. They have done ab the abominable works. There's no one who does good. Amen. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The first thing is this. The, one of the realms where man fell, it is in his mind. At this point, man does not see any need for God. And man is now trying to take God out from, from things that needs to, to, we need to do. You, you can see that man is void to know when to stop. This is where even Bible all judged in the book of um, Psalm, um, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 4. Proverbs 23, 4. It said, Do not overwork to... Do not Overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Oh, let me read this. Let me read the NLT version. NLT says, "Do not wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit." Today, people don't even know, know when to quit. Why? Intellectually, they actually they actually bring grief to their own body, not even knowing when to to quit. Yes, a man likes to smoke, but do you have to go and sell your body to smoke? I'm even just using just even the elementary ones because I've heard of people who sell their own body. The only reason they're doing it to actually prostitute is because they wanted to satisfy their um, drug addict, their addiction. But wisdom will tell you that, yes, I like to eat um, pudding. But if the doctor tells me that pudding, uh, my cholesterol is high, I better stop pudding. And yet some people don't even, can't even think to that place to say, this is not good enough for me. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So you need to see the first way man fell was intellectually. We became imperfect in, in, our, in our minds. A place where we now begin to avoid God. A place where we now begin to, to discard God. Amen. A place where God himself is no longer considered anything worthy. Amen. Uh, if you read um, the book of um, Genesis chapter 3, Adam said, I heard your voice and I was afraid. Amen. A place where man himself, God is no longer what he wanted anymore. In his mind, God should not be there. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So we need to be so sure that we need to put back God back into our lives. And this was what even brought the first, um, the first mother. Cain killed Abel. Why? He said, God has not shown favor to my offerings. But the foolish thing is this. Killing Abel, will he make your own offerings to be accepted? That's how foolish a man thinks. When a man's heart is devoid of God, even the, the small, um, how do you call that, logic, will, be, will, will not seem logical to him. Yes, you brought an offering to, to God. And God accepted your brothers. What should you do? Ask your brother, what did you do to make God accept yours? Perhaps I can copy it and make God accept mine. But rather, it felt like if I kill my brother, that will, make, that will, that will work out to me. That's to show you how man has, his depraved mind has become. Today, people think, oh, I don't enjoy being a man. You know, being a man is very hard. Maybe I should just do a sex change and become a woman. Maybe that will solve the situation. Let me tell you, women have problems. Men have their own problems. So if you think that one sex is better than the other, you just, you're just, you're, you're not, you're just, it just shows how foolish you are. If you think that, oh, maybe in my next world, I'm coming as a woman because I think it's better. Perhaps you should, you should ask your wife every month what she goes through. And she'll tell you that I'd rather choose to be a man. She, women want to be men. And some men are saying, I want to be a woman because I think it, the world is easier on them. But I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. That's to show you the imperfection of man's heart. Which is now causing fear, causing distrust, causing depression, causing perversion of all kinds. And that is where it starts. Amen. Fear. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And the Bible said that in the book of Second Timothy chapter um, two, um, Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, it said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of sound mind. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So the first realm when which man fell was intellectually, in his heart. It became imperfect. What God made perfect before now became void. Now man begins to see differently. The second way man became imperfect is in his body. Amen. This realm of imperfection is quite easy for us to see. Many of us can actually tell. I remember when I was 10, I was much stronger. Now that I'm much a little bit older, now I can't do what I used to do when I was 10. When I was 10, I could decide to backflip, to, to uh, backflip. Try, let me try anything. 
I can try and tell myself, let me jump. But now, even if I see the steps and I see, I'm like, no, let me just walk that steps easily. And that's why today you don't, you don't even, have, because I know that things are not the same anymore. Amen. You can even tell that your body is becoming, is, is imperfect. Before now, I never used to wear this thing. Amen. Now I have to wear it because to help my eyes see properly. Amen. I think we're up in Jesus' name. Sin brought death. Sin brought imperfection to man. Amen. When man sinned, God said, because you have sinned, you would, to, from dust you have been taken, and to dust you will do what? You will return. And that's why mankind is like this. It's like the, the uh, upward, downward um, turn. There's a time in your life, you start as a child, you're dependent on people, then you keep going higher, you become very dependent, and all of a sudden, you don't see that you begin to decline again. And you begin to be more dependent on people, and you go back to being a child, and you go back to where you came from. It's like that. Amen. I pray God will us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Samuel 14, verse 25. Many of us are so, we have, we've given in so, to so much of imperfection that we never even assume that perfection is possible in the body. No one, most people don't even believe that it's possible to live a life where your body, everything about you is without blemish. Let's open our Bibles to Second uh, Samuel chapter 14, verse 25. It said, Now in all Israel, there was no one who was praised as much as Absalom for his good looks. From the sole of his feet to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. Imagine there was nothing that was imperfect in Absalom. But today, many of us always assume that it's, oh, it's not possible. Let me tell you, it's possible to, to live a life where everything about you is perfect. Your nose is proportional to your ear. Your nose does not look like a giant uh, ball standing on your face. Your ear does not look like it's, it's trying to fly away like uh, Obama's or, you know, some, like some people. Or some people who have, they'll tell you they have small hands. Uh, that's um, Trump. Yeah, I think that was what he said, right? And things like that. But here is a, is a time where you can see people, everything is proportional to each other. It's possible. It's possible where we can live a life where everything is without blemish. Amen. And I will tell you, even growing old, it, it's possible for you to live a life where your eyes are not dim, where your bones are not weak, where everything about you is strong. Yes, we will die, but you can still go to, your, to that grave even in full vigor. Let's open our Bible to the book of um, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. It said, Moses was 120 years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Amen. Let me tell you, it's possible for us to live a life of perfection where every part of our body is strong. Amen. Where you don't have to say, oh, I know this is something I, 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 I used, I, I have migraine. I have this medication to manage it every day. Or I used to have um, belly ache. I'm not trying to say that some of us will not have this in our body. But God's intention for us is to be disease free. To be honest, God's perfect intention is for us to be free from every form of affliction. But yes, some of us, I'm wearing glasses. Does not change that God cannot make my eyes perfect. It's because many people have, their body has become imperfect, maybe because of the life they lived. Amen. David was a man who gave himself to many things, and of course, when he got to an old age, I guess, yeah, some, some, some things actually had to fail him. Amen. But what I'm trying to say is this, imperfection came to man because of our sin. That's why we have all those imperfections in our bodies. But God actually intends for us to have a healthy life. Amen. My prayer God will help us in Jesus' name. So that was the second way which man fell, where man found imperfection. The third way is actually the foundation of all of them all. Spiritual realm. In your spiritual abilities, the first thing that happened when man fell was he actually got the, detached from God. He got detached from God. Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid and I hid myself. I'll tell you, knock on people's doors, want to talk about sports, People will be more receptive. Knock on people's doors. Want to sell them um, a, 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 a machine that, that cleans their feet. They are more receptive about it. But knock on their doors and try to tell them about how the salvation of their soul. They don't want to hear about it. Why? They feel they are actually already afraid and they actually want to run away from God. 
God, no, do not put anything God in my fly in my box. Just stay away from God. I don't want to hear anything about God. And this is the foundation of all the imperfections. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Today, people are just just really fearful about the things of God. I saw something online which I've not tested, so I'm just going to say what I saw online. Some uh, there was a video of a person who bought um, a Google Assistant, that um, device that tells you, you know, you're going to say, "Hey, Google, um, play me music from 1940." It will play you something from 1940. Oh, Google, uh, turn off my light. It turn off off your light. And this person made a, a, a quick um, project. Like I said, I've not tried it, so I don't know how true it is. But this person said, "Google, tell me about Buddha." Google told the person about Buddha. Google, tell me about um, Islam. He told the person about Islam. He said, Google, tell me about Jesus Christ. And Google, Google Assistant said, I, have, I don't have enough sufficient data to, to tell you about Jesus Christ. You can see how, how, how the human works. They can tell you about the, the most irrelevant things in the world, but the most important thing in the world, you cannot find it you cannot, Google cannot help you with it. And I don't really blame Google. To be honest with you, everything about your salvation, you have to look for it for yourself. Nobody can help you out with Christ. You actually have to find it out. It's actually a plot of the devil because honestly, if Google goes, goes search about, about Christ, then it can, that means Google will actually preach. But the devil does not want Google to preach. Of course, that was why he took that, that um, part of it. But also, the another side to it is this. The salvation of soul is not something that is going to be accidental. It has to be something that has to be deliberate, which you yourself have to find out. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. The Bible said that to conceal a matter is the glory of God, but to search it out it is the honor of kings. Amen. God has concealed some certain things, but we must search it out ourselves. Google will not help you to, to, to be saved. You yourself must be the one to search out your salvation. Amen. So you Google is not going to help you and say, oh, I buy on me, you have to not swear today. I buy on me, you, you have to go to church today. Let me tell you, it is something you have to do for yourself. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The part where man has failed is spiritual. We have not given ourselves to God. Many of us have now become detached from God. We have become imperfect from God. Many people know, you can, if you ask people, oh, uh, who is the... Uh, Ask them any question about about the about the um, about politics. They know the answer, but ask them things that are very relevant. They don't know the answer, and that was why Jesus Christ told um, uh, Pilate, "I'm the truth," and yet he could not comprehend it. And Pilate was vast in any other thing, but about the real truth, he was void. Despite his wife told him, "This man is a whole righteous man." I saw him in the dream. Make sure you are clean from his hands. Rather, he felt like washing his hands it will be what will save him from Jesus. Amen. He was presented with God and yet he did not do what he needed to do with him. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Many of us have become void, have been, become imperfect in our relationship with God. Many of us rather spend our time in, in pub rather than spend time with God. Yes, we are actually in a time of stampede. And ask yourself, I always tell people, stampede has always been and will be as time will exist. Yes, if God tarries. But the mistakes people did last year, people used to do it again this year. A lady was fired from her work for um, inappropriate behavior during the stampede. And other people were fired again after that time. And you ask people, don't they learn from people's mistake? Why will you sleep around open in the, in the day? Sleep and, and allow people to record it in a day. And yet, people are still doing it. You ask yourself, they will tell you that uh, divorce is always highest in Calgary during, divorce, uh, during stampede time. Why? People cheat on their wives more than any other time. During stampede time, anybody, they are willing to do anything. I remember last year, I went to the stamping ground uh, with my uh, in-laws and my wife. My wife was standing here. I was here. And a lady was walking behind my wife. I was actually wearing my ring at, on that day. I'm not even wearing it today. But I was wearing that day, and the lady was winking at me. This part, you can see me, you can see a black guy, a black lady right in front of me, and two older people, and yet you're, you're winking at somebody who is standing right in front of his wife. Amen. It's a time when people just want to explore. It's a time when people have forgotten about God. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. 
I'll tell you, Sodom and Gomorrah, will, that's why the Bible said that so much, and that's even Sidon, and we'll, we, they have a better chance than we do. If these things were done in Sidon, it would, not, it, it would have still been alive today. But we have somebody that is preaching today. We have Christ who died for us, and yet we're still void of him. That's to show you the imperfection that is in our spiritual life. Many people are actually void of it. And the last realm, which uh, we're rounding up very soon, the last, last realm which men have become void of or has become uh, imperfect of, it's our social life. Amen. We now live in a world where there's so much hatred and distrust. And it has become the order of the day. Father against mother. Mother against children. In-laws against daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-laws against their in-laws. Amen. It has become the order of the day. The things that should be are no longer the way they should be anymore. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 36, he said, The enemies of a man are the members of his, of his household. So it is no longer that your enemies are far off anymore. Right now, today, in our today's age, day and age, your, the, your enemies are actually in your right in your house now. Amen. You can even imagine the things that God has given unto us as consolation has become even a snare to mankind right now. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 9 reads, he said, Live, enjoy your life with the woman whom you love. Amen. In this, your miserable life on earth. God calls it miserable life. And the only consolation he gave us is to enjoy your life with the woman whom you love. But today, the, even that marriage, is, people are not enjoying it anymore. Yesterday, I went in for, um, I was invited to the, one of my uh, family friends had the 20-year um, wedding anniversary. And the daughter gave one of the, I, I, honestly, I was really impressed by the speech of, that, of the girl. She said, she gave a statistics which I had to go look up myself. When she said how many divorces happen in a second, I was like, could that really be true? How many people divorce, right? You know, in every second, over 820,000 people divorce in a year. Over 820,000 people divorce in a year. That means in less than 40 years, it will become the same population as Canada. And imagine, and these rates are increasing every time. Before, in the 60s, people still tend to still hold on to marriage, despite they're not even enjoying it. Today, people get married today, the next minute they're saying bye-bye. They're not even waiting for 24 hours. They're annulling it right, right, right there and then. And these are even divorces, it's not even annulment. There's some annulment where people do, where both, con where pe both people say, we want to go and annul our marriage. That's not even the same. And there are so many that happens in uh, Vegas. People get married the next day, let's go and all it. I think we were just drunk. Let us go and all it. Can you imagine? Those, those were not even part of that number. And yet, we live in a world where people annul and divorce every time. Over 820,000 people in a year divorce. It's like the whole population of Edmonton divorce a year. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Even the little things we're supposed to enjoy has become what people themselves are now are now fighting against let me tell you if a man does not enjoy his family where else will he find enjoyment if you cannot enjoy the company of the people around you where will you find it before now you can go to movies and watch movies without fear today everybody's afraid even the little things that people used to enjoy before now you can't enjoy it anymore you, you can't even you, you say the word bomb in in, in the airport you, you are so sure you're not going on that flight you can't even sh just shout out of joy in, in the airport anymore. They, otherwise, the people will be looking at you the wrong way. You can't even tell people to please hold my back for me. Because everybody thinks you might have put something there. And, so, and nobody, I too will not accept things from people, strangers in the airport, because they're not even sure. Because I'll tell you, did, sir, did you pack this bag? Is it yours? Are you sure you know every content in it? At times when they're asking you that question, I, I, honestly, there was a time I was asking myself, I packed it. My, my wife helped me. So should I say I packed this bag? Because my wife helped me pack this bag. How about if they found something in it? But imagine how could people not start thinking like that? We have come to such a world where everything has become so much imperfect. Nobody trusts anybody anymore. You say good morning to people, people are afraid. Are you really saying good morning and you're trying to insult me? People are now, nobody really loves themselves anymore. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 10. 5 to 7, we're close soon. In even, even in our career, our career fits into this social uh, aspect. You see that even the, peop the, 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 the people that should be at the top are actually the ones at the bottom. And the people that should be at the bottom are the ones at the top. Honestly, you ask yourself, 
how did this happen? He said, there's an evil I have seen under the sun, an error that proceeds from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, while rich sit in lowly places. I have seen servants on horses, while princes walk on the ground like servants. Amen. The hard-working people are the ones that are suffering. The people that have, have, should not be enjoying it are the ones that are enjoying it. And the Bible said, there are under four things the earth cannot bear. A fool who is full of food. Today, the people that should be eating are not eating at all. You've worked 10 years, you lose your job, the government is only going to help you for six months with EI. After six months to tell you, bye-bye. Six months. Oh, 13 months. Okay. 13 months. After 13 months, by, but you've worked for 10 years. Even if you've worked for 25 years, 13 months. But a man who never worked his life can be on social assistance for the rest of his life. And yet, he's going to be there for the rest of his life. And a man who worked for 25 years, who paid money to the, um, e um, to the um, economy, will be told after 13 months, right, that bye-bye. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. We live in such a world where you ask yourself, how do they really think? This man really has worked 25 years. Don't you think it's your responsibility to help him? There are veterans, uh, I, I saw um, U.S. veterans, they said oh, over half of them are on the streets. You, you, you get your leg blown off. Did I go blow off my leg myself? They got their legs blown off. For the government to help them right now, they are left alone down the streets. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Man has f fallen intellectually, fallen physically, fallen spiritually, and fallen socially. We have left every part of our lives have become imperfect. But now the question is this, how do we do away with such imperfection? How? The imperfection we suffer, how do we do away with it? How do we get rid of it? In, in today's teaching, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to give you any 10 principles on how to get a rid, rid of it. There's only one rule to it. The only way can get away with such imperfections in your life. Amen. The Bible said, he that lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask from God. Amen. He that, um, they say, the way of a man is pleased with the Lord, he makes his enemy to be what? At peace with him. Everything is about God. So the one answer to all the problem we have stated today is God. Return back to God and all the imperfection in your life will be made perfect. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33 said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. Amen. We will be added unto you. Many seek healing in their flesh, peace in their marriage, hope and peace of mind, upward movement in their career. But I can tell you all this can only be attained in God. Amen. Let me tell you, for the one who is seeking healing in their flesh, the only man that can heal you divinely is God. All the doctor does is just try an error. You have a headache. There's even a disease, there's even an headache they call cluster headache. The doctors don't even know, know why and why people have cluster headache. They just know that there'll be a time when people have such headaches and after a while it will go away. But in, there's someone who can actually heal you from healthy, every ailment. And that person is Jesus. Let's read Psalm 103, verse 3. The way for you to get that uh, perfection in your health is through Christ. He said, who forgives all our iniquities and heal all your diseases. Amen. Not just some, not just few, not just your cataract alone, not just a glaucoma, but it can heal everything. Amen. He said, in him we have the power to make wealth. Let me tell you, you can have all the degrees you want, but the only man who can, the only person, that is not a man actually, God, the only person... When I, when I mean God, that can give you that power to make wealth is God. It is not your boss. Amen. Say so those who trust in, um, in the that trust in, in man will fail. The harm of man would fail you. Even if you have um, Trump as your uncle, does not make does not guarantee anything in your life. Even if you have Trump and uh, what is my uh, Trudeau as your brother, does not guarantee anything in your life. The only thing that guarantees in your life is God. Amen. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse eighteen. Deuteronomy 8, 18 said, But remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth. He's the one that gives you the ability to make wealth. I tell people, yes, people tell you, oh, the 10 books, the 10 steps to wealth. Honestly, all those things are just jargons. Yes, you need to, you need to do your own part as a man, but 
what actually makes you wealthy is not what you do it's god's grace time and chance happen to them all amen if god gives you that grace you don't see that things are working out for you amen i pray god will help us in jesus name in him you can have peace you know even in your families in your marriage amen if you read the book of exodus chapter 1 verse 21 the bible said that because their midwives feared the lord he made them their own what homes so it was not because they, they were pretty. That was why they had their own homes. I was listening to one of the teachings by Apostle B.O. Olaojo, the founder of our ministry, and he said something he has realized is this, that um, ugly women always have better homes than pretty women. When I mean better homes, I'm not saying pretty homes, but they always, quickly they are married, quickly they, they stay married till they die. But the pretty ones are the ones that are praying when they're 40. Father, give me a husband. Of course. Amen. And the issue is this. Because those ones trust in their beauty. The ones that are beautiful from young, they already know they're beautiful. So they know that they can get their way. Wow. I know if I go to that place, they will give me the job. Why? I don't know. I know how to get away with men. I know how to get away with people. But the ones that know that um, their body has failed them. What do we have to trust in? They have to trust on God. So as soon as one man comes, they begin to trust on him and say, God, let this be him. Let this be him. And with that, God builds them their own home. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And many of us are praying, God, oh, you know, some people will say, I don't want to go to that person's house and eat. I don't want to talk to that person. I don't want to do this. Oh, you know, I have enemies. Let me tell you, the only way you can stay away, that you can have victory over your enemies is through God. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7, Let's, Proverbs 16 said, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to so be at peace with him. The first thing is this you, you must have a pleasing way with the Lord. If your way pleases God, even your enemies cannot stand against you. Amen. Even if they do, God will shut their mouth. Dave, Daniel had a perfect life with God, even when he was lied against and he was thrown to the lion's den. Even the lions could not even touch him. But when his enemies were thrown to the lion's den, the Bible said, before they even touched the floor of the, of the den, they were, they were already torn apart. Amen. We must change our mindset that imperfection is a norm. Amen. We must understand that. We must change our... That many of us have already assumed that, oh, I'm, I'm never going to be liked by anyone. Everybody's going to always hate me. I'm never going to have enough. I'm never going to have peace in my home. We need to change our mindset. Amen. We need to understand that God is the one that blesses us and does not have to sorrow to it. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The Lord blesses. The, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he has no sorrow to it. We need to understand that it is God who blesses that and will not add sorrow to whatever you have. Amen. And so that's why we need to engage in prayer and say, God, everything you have given to me, oh God, that is not perfect enough, change them. This is why I tell believers, the Bible said, um, let's open our Bible to the book of James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Is any of you in trouble? Let him pray. He didn't say let him cry. He didn't say let him jump. He didn't say let him do anything. Let him pray. James chapter 5. Just give me one second. Let's 13. Yes. Say, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is any of you in trouble? Another version will say, and every she will say, is any of you in trouble? Let him pray. Amen. So the issue is this. Is there any imperfection in your life? This is time. You need, the first thing is this. First of all, come to God. If you don't come to God, any other thing is, 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 is false. But the first thing to do is, when you have come to God, then you now, can now begin to pray and tell God, God, this imperfection in my life, remove it in Jesus' name. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, it said, Since the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of God suffered violent. Amen. And only the violent can take it by force. This is the time we need to start praying as believers. and say, God, prayer, I need to, this in my marriage. You can see I'm not enjoying it. Father, touch my, the heart of my husband. You can begin to pray and say, God, you are the one that says that children are the heritage of the Lord. Give me my own children. You are the one that says, oh God, I will be the head and never the tail. Give me, oh God, and promote me at work. You are the one that says, oh God, that, oh Lord, that let him that work, let him, let him that do not work, should not eat. I'm working, oh God. Give me grace to eat, oh God. 
Let that what I have be enough for me. Begin to pray. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And I'll tell you, the devil is quite, it's even more faithful than many of us. The devil is doing his work more faithfully than, than believers. Amen. The Bible said in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he said, your, your adversary, the devil, goes around seeking whom that you may devour. And in the book of Job chapter 1, the Bible said, God asked the Job, uh, devil, where have you been? What did he say? I'll be going to and fro. He has never stopped. From the days of Job to the days of even Peter, the devil's work has never stopped. He's always looking, going back and forth. So don't think he's always on alert. The devil is so alert that he's going back and forth. If he sees one little, that's why the Bible said, do not give the devil a foothold. The Bible does not say give him a door. The Bible is saying don't give him a little crack. Because if he gets a foothold, he will put his whole head in. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So it is wanting for us to, for, for God to promise us perfection of life. But let me tell you, it is another thing for us to say, God, I want to receive it. And we can only attain that perfection of life in prayer. Amen. If, like we said, the first thing is this, you must first become one of God. You must first seek God and his righteousness. Then you cannot begin to pray. And then you can see the perfection come to pass in your life. I just want to just bow our heads today. If you have not given your life to Christ, let me tell you, it's possible to be in church and yet not be a Christian. It's possible to have a Christian name, to even be called Peter, to even be called Jesus, and yet not even be a Christian. I just wanted to ask God, help me, O Lord. Come into my life. Come in today. Come in to stay. What is that imperfection in you? You cannot help yourself. The only one that can help you is God. Just ask him to come into your life today. Ask him to give you strength. And let's begin to pray as if Father God of heaven, every imperfection in my life alone, turn around in the name of Jesus. The imperfection in my marriage, the imperfection in my career, the imperfection in my health, the imperfection in my children, the imperfection, O oh God, around me, O oh God. O oh God, remove it in the name of Jesus. Let perfection come, O oh God. That imperfection will be done away with the Lord in Jesus' name. Do away with every imperfection in my life, O oh God. That I will become more like Christ daily, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done, O God. We give you praise. We give you honor, O God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.